Hi there, everybody. It's Heather from Center for Teaching and Learning, and I want to take a couple of quick minutes to talk to you about how you can use Zoom to record um, your course lectures to share with students asynchronously or to create a quick tutorial um, using Zoom that you're pretty familiar with. So you can see here that I am in the campus portal and I can access Zoom in a couple of different ways. So from the campus portal in the launch pad, I can access it through the Zoom button. If I have the app downloaded on my computer, I can go down to the little tool bucket and click to open um, the Zoom app. But I actually have downloaded the Zoom extension for Chrome, and I like to use that because it's the fewest possible buttons. So I'm going to go ahead and start a meeting, and I'm going to start the meeting with a video on. So this is gonna ask me to connect with my computer audio. I can also see that I am muted, so I'm gonna unmute myself right now. Um, now you can see me, here I am. Um, and I have a couple of options here available for me, for me in my toolbar. So when I'm ready to start recording, I do not need to have other people in the meeting to start recording. I can just simply click record. And remember when you record, the key is to record to the cloud, which is this bottom option here. Um, the reason for that is when we record to the cloud, our recordings automatically go to Kaltura and from Kaltura, we can edit them, we can add professional captions for accommodations, um, we can create clippings, quizzes, and most importantly, we can share them with students or even people outside of the university. So it's really essential um, since that's where all of our videos are stored and there's no cap on how many videos can be stored in Kaltura that we record to the cloud. So now let's look at a couple of the tools that you might um, use in the course of um, your, in the course of your um, presentation. So you can see here that we have the big green screen share button and that gives us a couple of options. So when I click that, um, I can see that it gives me all these potential screens. I need to identify the screen that's gonna have the content that I actually want to share. So when I share that, I can then go into my presentation um, I can click through my slides and give, this is actually just one of the Google template slides, and I can, you know, click through and give my lecture and all of my points and stop recording whenever I'm ready to stop recording. As soon as you click stop recording, it'll zip it to Kaltura. So if you happen to click stop and then start again, it'll send you two different videos. So if you need to pause because the phone's ringing or the dog's barking, then go ahead and click pause instead of stop. So I'm gonna stop screen sharing here so we can look at our other potential options um, for our, our, our lecture content. Um, so we just looked at screen sharing. We can also do the whiteboard feature. So when I choose the whiteboard, you can see that it brings up the annotation box here. And I can use the drawing tools. I can type in specific text. Um, I can use the eraser if I need to. I can even save specific whiteboard um, if I'm doing equations or whatever on here by using um, the save. I can do formatting. I can use a stamp to kind of bullet point myself or my points. Um, so this is pretty handy, very basic, but still very handy um, as far as writing out stuff. We're used to writing on a whiteboard. So I'm gonna stop screen sharing there um, because I also wanna look at what else we have going on. So you can see here that I have an easy access button to share my iPhone or iPad. If you have an iPad, you don't even have to have it plugged in and you can search for it as long as the Bluetooth's on with this button here. When I go to advanced, um, this is actually super common because those of us that are using a document camera will choose the advanced button and then the content from a second camera. So that second camera can be a document camera or that can be um, another camera that happens to be plugged in to the USB. 
And another th new thing that they have in beta, but which is getting a lot of traction, is this PowerPoint as a virtual background. So usually when we're recording Zoom, um, we'll have our face, our talking head, is in the, a little square in the corner. When we use the PowerPoint as a virtual background, it allows the PowerPoint to be our virtual background. So now you can see that I'm in this presentation on close-ups. And instead of me being a little square down in the corner, you can see that there's my outline. So as I'm moving forward in my slide deck, you can see that you know, it, it acts almost like a green screen to where I'm superimposed on top of it. And I can click through all of my slides um, and give some information. And they can still see me and get the social presence that seeing a face um, Gives to, gives to learners. So I'm going to go ahead and um, stop sharing. Now remember that as you're creating um, these recordings, that it'll spotlight on your voice. So if you're creating a recording with students or other people in it, make sure that their mics are muted because otherwise every time somebody makes a noise it'll spotlight on their video instead of yours and if you're the one talking you don't want that distraction um, or to have somebody else that's not doing the presentation um, to be kind of taking that that spotlight so i hope that this was enlightening just remember record to the cloud and then we can go and gather that recording and figure out how you need to share it um, Happy building, and if you have any questions, go ahead and give CTEL a call, and I'll talk to you soon. Can't wait to see what you create.